What the tiger cub taught her tiger mother, or what tiger mother really learned from tiger cub. Did anyone read this book? Seriously, I don't know Amy Cha personally. I don't really intend to know her, but I actually did read the whole book that she wrote. And I'm continuously amazed by the number of news outlets on the web that are conducting interviews and writing articles based on an excerpt of a book without actually checking into the actual book. And there's really two stories here of um, either an expertly chosen or unfortunate choice of excerpt depending on how you look at it. I'm sure she's selling a lot of books and getting a lot of exposure, but um, the death threats maybe she didn't plan on because the book is actually a very redemptive story or it hints at redemption. And I think uh, there's only two articles that I've read out of the countless on the web that um, really refer to the whole book. One of them really mocks it as a very polished, eat, pray, love kind of a story, which I think is overly simplistic and also demonstrates a lack of understanding at how radical this transformation is that she talks about and how many people don't do it and how much courage it actually takes for her to be exactly where she is in that book. And the second review kind of just didn't take a stand on it and just asked Amy Chua to weigh in on being misunderstood. So my take on this is Number one, there's a Chinese phrase for kind of this misunderstanding that she's experiencing, and that is Huo Gai, <laughs> which means to me that um, the selection, allowing the excerpt to be chosen or choosing that excerpt and entitling it as she did, really asked for. So, so she deserves the publicity that she's getting. But having read the whole book, so I'm not commenting on the excerpt. I'm going to talk about the piece that no one talks about, and it's a spoiler alert because, I mean, obviously no one's reading the book, so I'm just going to reveal it, that what she really learned was from two main incidents. One is getting a puppy and trying to apply Chinese parenting to an untamable puppy that just wouldn't, wouldn't behave as she wanted it to. And so she learned that there's a limit to this control that she believes she has over her daughters and that, that and the power that she believes that she's exerting through her ideals and and principles and beliefs and doctrines of her personal religion called Chinese parenting. And so she hints at that and it's not as overt until this blow up incident in Moscow in Red Square where her daughter throws the, in, down the gauntlet and says, I hate you, I hate my life, I hate violin, I hate everything about the way I am in this family right now and Amy runs off and, run, and she says she runs and runs and runs until there's nowhere to run anymore and that's what we later find out is that's the moment that when she comes back from that trip she begins to write the book and I love that image because it is like we can run from the truth the elephant in the room for as long as we can and we normally do like we just keep running until there's nowhere to run anymore. And that's when we're forced to face the truth of our experience and, and confront some of these things. And she did it in a book and she shared it with the world. Um, it happens to be that none of that was shared in the excerpt that everyone's commenting on, which is really unfortunate because what she shows in her willingness to look at herself is a maturity and a willingness that most of us aren't willing to um, show about parenting, especially something so close to the vest as parenting, because we kind of want to defend it. We hold on to the ideas. It's like politics and religion, their beliefs, and they're just, they're unquestionable, but she questions it. And um, God, as I talk about this, I really need to write the article because nobody's taken this read on it, which is she learns about the two areas that she acknowledges in the book that are ill-addressed and are not cons compensated for in Chinese parenting, failure and happiness. Now, the funny thing is all the pundits and all the commentators at the Asian American level have been raised with that same notion. 
So they're either successful, so they've never known failure, they've lived at the very wide perimeter in avoidance of it and have been successful at doing that, or and they're not aware of this other layer of happiness, joy, fulfillment that's below, that's underneath success or beyond it, however you want to think about it. But it's the unconditional feeling of self-worth that's not tied to success, it's not tied to the image, it's not tied to what you own and what zip code you live in and what schools your children go to. It's not tied to anyone else around you or anything around you, it comes from inside. And, sh and Amy Chua is touching around the edges of that in her book and she's giving us a window into her discovery of that missing piece and to get to tell us the story of how one discovers that there is an emptiness is a gift because m most of us are living in complete lack of awareness that there's even a piece to be filled a missing piece to this elaborate puzzle that we believe that we're holding together so well and what I love about her daughter's story, and she only spends a few pages, it's like the last 20 pages of this 250 page book, that talk about how her daughter chooses to quit violin, this image of precision and control and perfection and, and being difficult, and going to play tennis in her own way, not starting at age three like Andre Agassi and going to Nick Boletari and becoming a some kind of a champion, but just kind of working her way up through the novice levels Yes, taking lessons from a coach, but just competing against people who are better than her and losing and feeling proud of herself because she now knows what she needs to learn and how to improve and taking a sense of internal uh, control over how she views herself and how she's measuring her own worth. Now, how she's doing that in the town of you know New Haven, Connecticut, where I don't, you know, I imagine that the whole environment is pretty much based on achievement that's an amazing thing if she's actually achieving it but the way it's described in the book points to that sort of with the mother letting go of that process as much as she can it's at least allowing the, the leash to be a little bit longer on this daughter's development and you know her mother having to face shame for the first time which is something that she's avoided her whole life through this elaborate construct again of personal religion which didn't allow it um, and then <laughs> how she goes and does improv, which, you know, is funny because earlier in the book, Amy describes shopping for a music teacher and interviewing somebody who's really a proponent of creative freedom and improvisation and expression. And her comment on him is, poor guy, he just didn't have what it takes. And so that judgment that people who are free are somehow just settling for that because they don't have the skills to be something quote unquote better, meaning fitting the mold of success and operating within a system, is totally challenged by her own daughter who goes and chooses to do improv. So this exactly the areas that are the most vulnerable for this mother are exactly what her daughter steps into by choice and forces her mother to be more courageous, showing her mother that she is more courageous than her mother would have her to be, and stretches and grows and expands the whole family in the process. So that's my read on it.